Whether you like it or not, dealing with difficult clients is just the way it goes sometimes for freelance filmmakers. And in this video, I'm gonna share 10 tips I've learned over the years that makes handling them just a little bit easier. I mean, it's never gonna be fun. And sometimes when you get that late night email asking for yet another round of edits, it can make you wanna bash your head against the wall. But even though you don't have to like difficult clients, there are some basic principles I try to live by when it comes to running my business and dealing with them that makes the whole process a little less painful. So if everything was easy in life, all of our clients would be dream clients. You know, the ones who set clear and realistic expectations, they pay fairly without trying to haggle you down, and they communicate professionally. In a perfect world, you'd just be able to say no to anyone you had doubts about and only work with the very best clients. But freelancing doesn't usually work like that, and most most of us who aren't Roger Deakins will need to work with all sorts of people to keep our businesses running. So I like to follow the strategy of hoping for the best, but preparing for the worst. And if you stay in this business long enough, it's only a matter of time before you run into a client that makes you want to pull your hair out too. Or maybe you just need the cash and can't afford to say no in the moment. But if you keep these 10 principles in mind, you should be able to minimize the headaches and get out with your sanity intact. So let's just start at the beginning of the process, the moment of first contact, when you're both trying to get a feel for each other and establish the basics of the job. At this point, it is incredibly important to set crystal clear expectations for what they want from you by when and for how much. When you're just starting out, it can be tempting to try and be super agreeable and just say what you think they wanna hear to make sure that you end up with the job. But this is usually a mistake and I've learned the hard way that it's much better to ask direct questions and push back at things that aren't reasonable in your opinion because if you wait to raise issues, it gets way more complicated and it increases the chance of people getting mad at each other. So ask them, what's the timeline? What's the budget? What are the expected deliverables and by when? How much help will you have? Or is this a one man band sort of job? Get specific here because you wanna know exactly what they have in their head. And if it sounds like too much, you absolutely need to say so. Agreeing with people because you think it will make them happy and then finding out later that you can't actually deliver what they want because the budget is too small or there aren't enough shoot days or whatever, that's when things get really tense. The second thing I'd suggest if you think you might have a difficult client on your hands, sort of happens concurrently currently with setting clear expectations, and that's for you to set equally clear boundaries. It's like two sides of the same coin. You need to understand what they want, and at the same time, they need to understand exactly what you're offering. Like, let me know if this sounds familiar. You do a project for someone, let's say a short piece of branded content, and everything goes great. And you fire off a polished edit, and you just wait to hear from them. Then they come back with a bunch of changes, which is fair enough, and then you do them and send them an updated version back. Then they come back again with more small changes, and maybe even ask you to change something back that you just fixed. So you grit your teeth and make the edits, but then a few days later, they come back with more of the same. This cycle can go on and on. And if you haven't set clear boundaries, there's no way to break it without a confrontation most of the time. But you can avoid all this with boundaries. So in this example, assuming I was responsible for the editing, in the initial stages, I'd say something like, I'm happy to include two complimentary changes to the edit. And then after that, an hourly rate or daily rate of X dollars will apply. This both protects you from being dragged into a never ending slog of post-production, while at the same time, it encourages them to think Think deeply about what they really want instead of just sending you what other random thoughts they had on their commute to the office. Clear expectations and boundaries protect both parties, you and the client. And if you nail both of them, it goes a long way to avoiding fights down the road. And while you're going through this part of the process, the third point is incredibly important and that's to keep everything in writing. What can easily happen here, and I'm talking from personal experience, is that people get sick of endless email chains, and so eventually someone suggests that you all get on a call to speed things up. And that's great, I'm a big fan of talking with clients before a shoot, but the problem with calls or Zoom meetings or whatever is that no one has a record of what's been said, and it can turn into a my word against your word scenario. I've had this happen even at really high levels of production, where a producer and I had a long phone call about rates and money, and then at the end of it I thought we were on the same page. But then a few weeks later I got 
an email quoting a very different set of numbers than what we talked about on the phone. And by that time, it was just a couple days away from the start of shooting. Now I'm like 99% sure I was right here because as a freelancer, I'm very attentive when it comes to the financial negotiation part. And it seems kind of unlikely that I didn't pay attention to the agreed rate. But by then it was last minute and I didn't feel good about just walking away. We had a bunch of pretty tense exchanges where neither of us wanted to back down. And even though I did the job anyways, it left a bitter taste in my mouth about the client. And I'm sure they saw me as difficult to work with as well. And this all could have been avoided if I just sent a follow-up email after the call outlining the terms as I understood them. And that way both sides are protected from any misunderstandings. So feel free to do as many Zoom meetings as you want. They're great. but always make sure that the important parts are in writing somewhere. And speaking of rates, this is another key part of the equation when it comes to dealing with tough clients or really any client for that matter. Talking about money is just awkward. There's no way around it. But if you wanna have a sustainable career, you're gonna to have to get comfortable stating clearly what you're worth. Especially when I was starting out, I was just so excited to be considered for a job that I would skip over the money part of the conversation or else lowball myself with my quote because I was terrified that if I asked for too much, they just would move on to the next person. But that is 100% the wrong way to go about things. You are so much better off talking openly about money as early as possible. And trust me, most production managers are very used to having these conversations. It's really just, us, the creatives that find it awkward most of the time. And the longer you leave it, the worse it gets. So get it out in the open as early as you can. Be confident and tell them what you're worth and don't be afraid to give them a polite no if they come back with something you don't feel good about. Now on the flip side of that, if they can't meet your quote, but you wanna do the job anyways because you like the project or maybe it just sounds fun or you need a job, then by all means, drop your prices and meet them on their budget. But when dealing with a new or potentially difficult client, make sure you're doing this stuff on your terms that you've shared clearly. No one really likes talking about this stuff, but especially when it comes to tough clients, you'll want the financial part of things locked in with no room for doubt. Once you've come to an agreement on this stuff, the next step, and this is especially relevant if you're worried you might have a tough client on your hands, is to get a basic contract in place. Now, I do work with contracts a lot of the time, if I'm being honest, but that tends to be with people that I already have a working relationship with and I trust. If you're working with someone new or if you have any little doubts in your head that they could turn out to be a handful down the road, get a contract in place and protect yourself. It doesn't need to be a 20 page legal document. Just make sure it outlines the expectations, your boundaries and the agreed upon rates. There's not much else to say here other than to make sure you feel good about all the details in the contract before you sign it because you can't renegotiate later. Now that might sound a little bit obvious, but early on in my career, when I was just happy to have a job, I would sometimes sign things even though I didn't love the terms. And then I'd slowly get resentful to the point where I'd ask them to change the deal. Just don't do that. It's super unprofessional and it's gonna make you look like an amateur. And the next point here ties in nicely with contracts, though it's more of an overall philosophy rather than a hard skill. Sometimes it can be tempting to promise clients the moon because you really want them to give you the job, but if you can't actually make good on those promises, it can seriously hurt your reputation. If you say you can give them incredible results on a tiny budget just to land the gig, but then what you end up giving them is underwhelming, their final impression of you is gonna be disappointment and irritation and it's really unlikely that they're gonna call you back. The much better approach is to under promise and over deliver. I'm not saying that you shouldn't sell yourself and sell your skills, but if you can, keep your promises on the conservative side and then exceed their expectations with what you deliver. They'll be pleasantly surprised and then they're gonna remember you in a much better light. Most clients are gonna be more likely to hire the person who gave them more than what they expected over the one who promised them high-end results and then gave them something more like a cheap infomercial. Dinner can take hours to make and who has the time? Under-delivering leaves a bad taste in everyone's mouth, but over-delivering gets you hired back. Now, sometimes when you're dealing with a difficult client, one of the first things to suffer is the communication. Maybe they're a little rude or demanding in their emails, or maybe they keep pinging you with unreasonable additions to the job after the contract has already been signed. I don't know, whatever. There are a lot of ways people can be hard to deal with, and it can be very easy to lose your patience and lash out. Believe me, I know the urge to tell a client just how wrong they are about something or how dumb their requests are how unfair they're being on certain points. And more than once I've made the mistake of expressing my frustrations, but this is just not the way to behave as a professional. And I've learned over the years that the much better approach is to kill them with kindness. 
that doesn't mean being a pushover or backing down because you shouldn't do either. Stand up for your worth and set clear boundaries like we already talked about, but your default mode of communicating should be to aim for an almost superhuman level of kindness. So what am I talking about? Well, let's say they ask you for an extra edit at midnight. Rather than tell them off like you might want to, say, thanks so much for your diligence in the edited process, but unfortunately this exceeds the terms of our agreement. Or maybe they're asking you why the color grading on their $1,000 shoot doesn't look like a Hollywood blockbuster. Who wouldn't want to lash out at that? <laughs> but don't. Instead, say something like, I really appreciate the feedback and you've clearly got great taste. I'd be happy to revisit the color grade, but since this is outside the scope of our initial agreement, I will have to invoice an extra day of editing. This is where under promising and over delivering comes into play. And if you've done this well and set good boundaries, hopefully these aren't scenarios you have to deal with. But most of us will come across someone in this business who pushes our buttons and unwavering kindness is almost always the best approach. It's hard for clients to find fault with someone who is relentlessly positive in their communications, even if you're pushing back against last minute requests. But as soon as you lose your temper, you're gonna get labeled as hard to work with. So no matter how mad you are, the best revenge is to never let them see you mad. Kind of like dealing with the trolls in the comments section of YouTube. And that segues perfectly to the next point, which is to never lose your temper openly. Maybe it's unreasonable demands like we just talked about, or a field producer who treats you with disrespect, or even a production assistant with a bad attitude. Thank you for the apology, but you'll never work in this town again. Uh, you might think it's gonna feel good to tell someone what you really think about them, and that if you just yell loudly enough, suddenly they'll see how wrong they were and come around to your thinking, but that's not the way it works in real life. If you lose your cool, they don't see your way of thinking at all. They just get resentful for you being a jerk, and then they dig their heels in more. If you snap on that PA, the rest of the crew won't admire you for your unwavering dedication to the creative vision. You're just gonna look like a jerk. Just like in a high level business negotiation, the person who loses their temper first is the loser. And this is just as true in film production in my opinion. Now I'm definitely not saying that it doesn't happen on set because people lose it all the time. And if you've been on a set, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But the very best people I've worked with manage to stay calm even as things fall apart all around them. And these are the people that I wanna work with again. So be that person, because even if it feels good to yell and air all the little grievances that have built up in your mind, you're only hurting yourself. And yes, I know it's easy to say don't lose your temper, and another thing to actually keep it in check when you're at the end of a 16-hour day, 12 days into a shoot, when everyone's patience is wearing thin. Sometimes conflicts are going to be unavoidable, no matter how hard you try. And if you do find yourself in an argument with a client that gets too heated for your liking, there's really only one firm rule that I try to stick to if at all possible, and that's to never walk off a job. If you walk in the middle of a shoot or in the middle of an edit without finishing what you said you'd do, you can not only damage your reputation with that client and everyone in their network, but also set a dangerous precedent for yourself that it's okay to quit when things get rough. If you do it once, you can do it again, and that's just not a good habit to get into. Now, I am not saying that you can't part ways with the client who you don't see eye to eye with, and you're not some sort of camera slave who can't leave when they want, but walking out in the middle of something because you lost your cool is not not the way. It's just never the way. If you feel like you're being taken advantage of, the best way to get what you want is to wrap the job like a pro, and then when they come back to you because they loved your work so much, then you renegotiate from a position of power or give them a polite no thanks and never see them again. If you realize partway through that the producer is an egomaniac who treats you badly, don't run off in a fit of rage. You should finish the shoot and then politely decline every other email from that person in the future. I've personally only ever quit two jobs in my career, and in both cases, I made sure I finished whatever my current obligations were before I resigned. And I also tried hard to find a replacement for myself so that the client wasn't hung out to dry, and I'd like to think that's a big part of the reason why I've got a decent reputation in the industry. So even though it might sound like a cool scene in a movie to flip off your boss and storm out of the office never to return, Have a nice day, you miserable bastards. as a professional in what's really a pretty small industry, you're much better off fulfilling your obligations. After that, you never have to see them again and the power is back in your hands. And lastly, when the job is wrapped and you're back at home sitting on the couch, when you get an email from the client with some negative feedback, don't take it personally. 
It happens all the time. You're gonna be chilling and catching your breath after a gig, and then something lands in your inbox asking, why wasn't there a drone shot and Verite coverage and complex gimbal movement of that moment when you were asked to cover it completely by yourself? It's infuriating, and my natural instinct sometimes is to just write back some long-winded, angry response, but as we already talked about, losing your temper is never the way. Or maybe they send you back an edit you spent days on perfecting with some sort of criticism that you think is totally unfounded, it's super easy to get into your own head and let it get you down. Or even the random YouTube comments I get occasionally where someone is telling me how I know nothing about filmmaking because I made a mistake while trying to explain how depth of field works or something like that. You just have to take a deep breath and realize that it's not personal. Well, maybe the YouTube comments are personal actually. <laughs> The point is that feedback and criticism in any form can be tough to hear, but you have to separate the product from your own self-worth as a person. It's okay for people not to like something you made. That doesn't mean you suck as a filmmaker, that you have no talent, or that you should just give up and quit right now. It's all part of the process, and if you can separate emotionally from the feedback, you might actually find that they're right. And if you can keep your feelings out of the equation, it might actually make you better. Okay, so there we go. 10 tips for dealing with difficult clients, because if you stay in this game long enough, you're gonna run into them sooner or later. And really this stuff is just good practice for being a professional in general. And before I go, I just wanted to give you a quick reminder that my documentary cinematography course is opening up again at the beginning of next month. And if you wanna be sure of getting a spot and getting a discount at the same time, get your name on the waiting list using the link in the description because last time it didn't even make it out of pre-sale before it sold out. I'm adding a bunch of new units as we speak. I'm revamping the way the community works. And this is gonna be the last intake before the price goes up. So you're gonna get lifetime access to the material plus all future updates and there are going to be lots of them, trust me. And you're gonna be part of a growing community. So if you're interested, it probably makes sense to do it sooner rather than later because the more I add to the course, the more the price is gonna go up over time. Anyways, I'll end my shameless plug there and all the info is in the link in the description. See ya.